one of the blessings that a man can receive is the ability to discern what God is doing in every season and in every time God is a God who walks based on times and seasons please lend me your attention he walks based on times and seasons and most believers do not have the discernment to understand what God is doing per time and per season Habakkuk said in chapter 2 I will stand upon my watch and I will set myself upon the tower so that I will see what you will say unto me hallelujah God is not doing the same thing in every season every season has his emphasis hallelujah and one of the things I know about God is that sounds sounds of worship are major prophetic tools that end seasons and open other seasons even the return of Christ will be at with the blast of the trumpets the Bible says and it will wrap up this phase as we know and um, we're honored to have two incredible incredible ministers of the gospel who are deep worshipers um, hallelujah now I decided not to do a video montage I want to take the time to introduce them sincerely void of pretense void of politics I just wanted to pour out my heart to let them know that this is a house of honor and that we're not just inviting them as guest artists but we're inviting them as touching the grace that represents their years of dealings with the spirit their scars their pain that which they have come to know about God hallelujah there is no one who has enjoyed a rich fellowship with the Holy Spirit within the last say 25 years anyone who has walked with God within this span of time it will be impossible for you to not have come across the worship ministry of Terry McHalmond hallelujah coming from the middle belt and coming from thank you an evangelical background we had people who loved the Lord sincerely um, but there was something a kind of worship a fountain of worship that our spirits cried out for especially when the Holy Spirit began to dive us deep into this river that has now prepared us for what we are doing across the nations and I remember coming across his songs and what a joy they were very deep worship deep worship I mean just flows like a river from the throne to your spirit we have had encounters on account of this worship and Terry McHalmond is a great 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 worshiper man of God all the way from the United States a songwriter a worshiper a song leader and an author hallelujah he has been behind many songs that have stirred up revival across the nations wonderful songs like my God and King you know great songs that have really blessed people I remember times when I would put some of his songs on repeat literally through the night just praying and worshiping sometimes while you're resting and incredible songs we sing many of the songs here songs like even so very profound songs I'm sure you hear some of them shortly and um, we really are honored to have him in our midst and I believe that beyond the depth of worship that will come from him leading us to encounter Jesus in a fresh way I believe that there are all kinds of impartations that will be happening hallelujah my first encounter with his worship ministry was through the ministry of Benny Hinn and he's ministered around the world today he's not only singing over America he's singing over Nigeria and singing over Koinonia hallelujah and sir we want you to know that we love you and your dear wife we honor you as touching the grace that you carry and we are ready to receive out of that which the Lord has deposited in your spirit and our hearts are open even though this is your first time this is home for you in the name of Jesus Christ 
Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. What do I now say about my friend and brother, Pastor Nat? Hallelujah. Take it higher for me. I reject temptation. Have you heard something like, Jesus, yeah. Jesus, yeah. In a special way. Help me, Koinonia. You make us Jesus, yeah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Pastor Nath is truly my friend and my brother. I love him with all my heart. He's an incredible man of God. Now, listen, 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 listen. Beyond the pulpit, we've shared many personal moments together. And I can tell you that one of the most striking things about his life is his love and his passion for Jesus. He genuinely, truly loves Jesus. And I've seen the kinds of sacrifices that he's made, seen and unseen, known to many and unknown to many more, to help stabilize the worship ministry across this nation and Africa. We thank God for precious gifts like him. One of the things that I hope will happen, and thank God for the incredible worship ministry, uh, the ministries that we have across the body of Christ, particularly the continent of Africa and Nigeria. Uh, but I think that one of the things that I'm hoping that God will use a worship experience like this to bring is the wisdom dimension of serving the purposes of God. We have so many great worshipers, well-meaning, well-intentioned people, sincere but I think there is a narrative about the idea of worship that is being sold that seems to neglect excellence, seems to neglect the place of preparation and a kind of delivery that can serve Jesus at a level that will be received by the globe. And so we have here and there very zealous people, but perhaps the intelligence, understanding the true Davidic order of worship that leads to territorial impact. I'm hoping in the name of Jesus that as they minister, especially for those who are called into the worship ministry, I'm already standing to receive for my own people that God will bring that other dimension that is largely missing in the body of Christ so that we do not have worshipers that are great who just rise and go down and fade with time, but that people whose kingdom contribution will last and last all through their lifetime and even beyond their lifetime you believe that shout aloud amen. amen and so pastor Nat pastors the OSS church and I've had the honor of ministering there pastor Nat hosts the hallelujah challenge that has become a global a global blessing to many I've had the honor of ministering there um, once and again and We've shared the stage on many, many platforms ministering the gospel within this nation and outside of this nation. And it's an honor every time we've met to just worship and to minister. Truly very humble man. And tonight you are going to be receiving um, worship from a fountain that has been dealt with by God. A fountain that represents and blowing over your life and destiny. And in the name of Jesus, as you hear him worship everything that represents yesterday, that will not allow you experience and enjoy victory. Perhaps this is not for everyone, but for someone who came here believing that everything that has brought you shame, has brought you tears, has brought you pain. As you immerse yourself in these sessions of worship, in the name of Jesus, your yesterday will wave you goodbye finally. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, before I invite them to come up and step back, I want you to listen very carefully. I have shared that there are many models of worship according to scripture, but three of them have caught my attention. And I'm doing this to prepare your heart as we begin these uncensored sessions of worship. Number one was the worship by the man called Job. 
The Bible tells us about Job that he was a man who feared God and eschewed evil. One time disaster struck and this man lost literally everything he had. Hallelujah. But the Bible tells us that upon hearing that he had lost his sons, his daughters, his estate, his cattle, literally everything. The Bible says he bent over, he fell to the ground and worshipped. What an incredible response. You will think that with such enormous, I mean, the kind of trauma that would follow this man back to back receiving these kinds of sad news. But the Bible says his response was that he worshipped. Number two, the Bible talks to us about a woman called Mary. That she came to Jesus with her alabaster box. She had a terrible past. This woman was a harlot. But the Bible says that upon encountering Jesus, she came and she broke her jar. It was made of one year's wages of spikenard. And the Bible says everything this woman had worshipped the Lord. Her tears worshipped him. Her hair representing her glory worshipped him. Her pain worshipped him. Her wealth representing her value the bible did not say she poured some she broke the jar the alabaster box to a point that most people said this is so much waste but she said no when it has to do with worship there is no waste there the third model of worship we see from scripture is found in revelations john was able to see the worship that happened in the throne room and he said he saw a group of 24 personalities that the Bible simply calls them elders. These were men who had achieved so much. It takes a lot to be an elder. Culturally speaking, one of the indices that qualify you to be an elder is age and experience. So by whatever parameter we know that for them to be called elders, these were noble people indeed. But the Bible says that when the four and uh, the, the four living creatures cried out and all of that the 20 and four elders cast their golden crown i like this they didn't just bow they cast their golden crown your crown is a representation of your achievements a representation of everything that is worthy of celebrating in your life so whether you are job haven't lost everything in pain perhaps feeling the weight of the economic turmoil across Nigeria and the African continent, your response tonight should be to worship. Perhaps you have a past that you may not even want to think about. Like Mary, there is still an opportunity for you to worship. Your tears can worship. Your pain can worship. Everything can join in the worship. And perhaps, like I would always say, you are one of the elders indeed. Haven't achieved so much in your life. Men know you are great. You know you are great. The devil knows you are great. Your environment knows that you are great. You are still not exempted from the worship. You will need to cast your golden crown and to participate in the worship tonight. So regardless what category you belong to, there is a chance for you to worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. I'm going to be inviting Terry McHalmon shortly to come and lead us through this that we have only heard on tapes, watched on videos, crusades, but now we'll be sitting in this same atmosphere with this incredible man. And shortly after, Pastor Nathaniel will come up and take us to another level whilst we just soak and at the end of the worship, I will come up to give a final charge and we're done. Are you ready to receive? Ladies and gentlemen, for the first time, here in Koinonia Global, please help me receive the ministry of Terry McHalmon. Thank you for staying to the end of this message. But before you leave, I want to tell you a story. There was a father who has two sons. And so he sent two of his sons to the farm like to go and harvest yam. So he called them both and sent them. The elderly one says he is going to go, that he is going to like go on the errands. But the younger one says he is not going to go. And so they left the presence of the man. And behold, 
the one that says he will go to the farm does not actually went but the one who says he was not going to go at a point he thought within himself and said my father has been very responsible for me so i will go so he changed his mind and went so i want to ask among these two sons who actually does the will of the father it is the younger one so as you have listened to this message it's not about listening alone if you're listening and probably you feel stirred up but later on the zeal the passion that you had when you were listening to this message dies and you do not apply this message it means the time that you dedicated listening to them, to this message was a waste so it is not about what you share alone it's not about the messages that you listen to alone it is more of what you take out of the, those messages and then apply to your daily lives to make you um better so i do hope and i pray that this message will transform your life will turn your life around.